Patel is Palestine News Director for Mondo Vice. It's a news website focusing on Palestinian issues. She's joining us from Bethlehem. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. I'd like to ask you about the kind of conditions that you believe that journalists work under when they're covering this story. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I mean, I'd first like to express what a sad and tragic day this is for Palestinian journalists and, you know, Palestinians everywhere. Um, as many of your guests have mentioned and some of the Al Jazeera correspondents have mentioned, working on the ground in Palestine is often a very volatile situation. In my experience, in the years that I've reported here, uh, journalists who are clearly marked as press often come under direct attack from Israeli forces. When we're covering protests, that can mean that journalists are either tear gassed, uh, they're targeted with rubber bullets or with live ammunition, as was the case um, for Shireen and her team today. So it is not uncommon. In fact, it's very common for journalists to come under Israeli fire when they're covering events in the West Bank. I understand that we can bring you live pictures at the moment from Shanine of uh, Shireen's body being carried through the streets um, of the town um, where the shooting is said to have taken place. Shanine is a town in the northern uh, West Bank. Um, Yumna, we heard earlier on from Stephanie Decker, our correspondent, quoting uh, an Israeli fo the Israeli foreign minister saying the death of uh, Al Jazeera journalist Shirin Abu Akhle was sad and he'd offered to investigate jointly with the Palestinian Authority. How much confidence do you have in that investigation? Um, I would say little to no confidence. You know, time and time again, uh, it has been shown that, you know, Israeli forces kill Palestinians, including Palestinian journalists, without cause in the occupied territory. And it's very ext extremely rare that Israeli soldiers, captains or military officials are ever held accountable for their actions. You know, is after sort of high profile killings like this, or for example, the killing of children that often get uh, more significant media attention, it's not uncommon for Israeli officials to say that they will investigate um, to express their quote unquote sadness and say that they will investigate these killings. But time and time again, almost without fail, these investigations lead nowhere, you know? And it's ironic, as Stephanie was reading out um, the Israeli min uh, foreign ministry's uh, statement, you know, it's ironic that the foreign minister says that journalists must be protected when, when you're talking about journalism in Palestine, Israel is the biggest perpetrator of crimes against journalists in in the West Bank. And so, you know, since 1967, 86 Palestinian journalists have been killed. Those numbers are from the Palestinian Journalist Syndicate. And since 2000, it's estimated that around 50 Palestinians have been killed. I talked to a representative from the Journalist Syndicate this morning. He said that just in the past two years, six Palestinian journalists were killed in the West Bank and Gaza. Hundreds have been injured, I mean, over the years. And according to, to Beit Salem, which is Israel's leading human human rights organization, the use of lethal force by Israeli forces in the West Bank is a crucial element in Israel's ability to maintain its control over millions of Palestinians. And unfortunately, journalists are often the target as they are the ones who are, are covering Israel's crimes and attacks in, in the occupied territory. Yumna, stay with me for a moment. There have been a couple of statements that have been put, uh, put out. Al Jazeera Media Network has put out a statement offering its condolences. It says, in a blatant murder violating international laws and norms, the Israeli occupation forces assassinated in cold blood Al Jazeera's correspondent. Al Jazeera Media Network condemns this heinous crime, which intends to only prevent the media from conducting their duty. Al Jazeera holds the Israeli government and the occupation forces responsible for the killing of our late colleague Shireen. It also calls on the international community to condemn and hold the Israeli occupation forces accountable. An official in Qatar's foreign ministry has also put out a tweet saying the Israeli occupation killed Al Jazeera journalist Shirin Abu Akhle by shooting her in the face while wearing the press vest and a helmet. She was covering their attack in Janine refugee camp. The state sponsors it sponsored Israeli terrorism must stop and unconditional support to Israel 
must end. Um, Yumna, let me ask you about the international pressure that we've talked about earlier on in the programme. There have been suggestions that the only way that there is going to be any sort of solution, any sort of resolution to this particular incident in terms of uh, an investigation uh, would come from foreign governments. Again, how confident could you be that that kind of pressure could be brought to bear? Unfortunately, again, I would have to say there's little to no confidence in foreign governments and third party states at this point when it comes to putting pressure on Israel for its crimes. As one of your guests mentioned earlier, there needs to be a political will. But unfortunately, when it comes to Israel, there is no political will in terms of holding Israel accountable for its crimes and its attacks on the journalists and press. You know, time and time again, when Palestinian journalists are killed, when children are killed, when unarmed women are killed, when anyone is killed in the West Bank by Israeli forces, you know, oftentimes you'll see these sort of statements from U.S. or European officials. But unfortunately, they're often just sort of empty statements followed up by, you know, lack of action. It's one thing to say, oh, you know, we condemn this killing and we, you know, assert that Palestinian journalists or the rights of journalists should be protected. But if the U.S. were to come out with that sort of statement, but then immediately after continue funding Israel and continue funding Israel's military, as it has been for years, sort of without any real consequences, then then I don't believe that that the situation will change or any accountability or justice will be seen for Shireen or the dozens of other Palestinian journalists who have been killed by Israel. Yes, this isn't, as you say, the first time that this kind of thing has happened. How Do you notice a change in the attitude in journalists after an incident like this? Do you find that people reconsider whether they should be covering conflicts like this? Um, as I believe it was Stephanie who mentioned earlier, you know, this is absolutely devastating. You know, not only this is devastating for Shireen's colleagues, for her family, for her friends, my heart goes out to them. This has really shaken, I think, any Palestinian journalist, any journalist that's working here um, on the ground and across the world. That being said, I do not think that incidents like these uh, shake the resolve of Palestinian journalists, because as you mentioned, and as I've said, this is not the first time that this has happened. You know, Palestinian journalists continuously are under attack by, by Israeli forces in their work. This is not the first time a journalist has been killed or severely injured. And Palestinian journalists are you know, frankly, never deterred and are determined to continue um, their work reporting on, on Israel's um, actions and crimes in the West Bank, because if they're, if they're not here to do it, um, then, then who will be? And, and frankly, that is, that is part of the reason, as some of your guests, I believe, have pointed out, why Palestinian journalists are often targeted. It's, it's a method of deterrence um, that is employed by Israel, by the Israeli government and Israeli forces. You know, these Palestinian journalists, Shireen and her team, were clearly marked as press. There's no way around it. So when journalists are targeted, there is a reason for that. It's to deter them from their work. But Palestinian journalists are strong. They have conviction. And despite all the attacks um, against them every single day, they continue to do their work. Uh, so I, I don't believe that, you know, Palestinian journalists will be deterred after this. But it is um, extremely tragic and devastating news for, for journalists and for those who knew Shireen. Is there anything more that can be done to protect journalists when they're covering um, the conflict in, in this particular area? Or are they pretty much on their own? They have the equipment and they have the facilities that they're going to get. Yeah, I mean, I would say, unfortunately, it often does feel like you're on your own. Um, you have your colleagues around you, of course, if, if the, the organization that you're working with um, you know, has has given you your support, that is all the better. But in terms of any sort of government or international protection, when reporting here on the ground in, in occupied Palestine, journalists very much feel that they are on their own, especially when we see the sort of lack of accountability and lack of response by foreign governments. It is widely just known here as a fact that Israel does not hold its soldiers, its military, its captains, its officials accountable for these types of crimes. And we also know, unfortunately, that foreign governments, governments like the, US, like the U.S. and European governments, um, also do not hold Israel accountable. So it leaves journalists feeling like there is really no one to, to protect them. 
Yumna Patel is Palestine News Director for Mondo Weiss, the news website focusing on Palestinian issues. Uh, Yumna, thank you very much indeed for your time, ma'am.